We're about to run through how to use video transition effects in your favorite video editing software the easy way in this step-by-step -step video transition tutorial. Hey, it's Justin Brown here from Primal Video, where we help you amplify your business and brand with video. If you're new here, then make sure you click that subscribe button and all the links to everything we mentioned in this video, you can find linked in the description box below. So let's jump into it. Now, when used correctly, video transitions can add a whole new dimension to your content and unlock a ton of creativity. But the wrong transitions or overuse of video effects can quickly become distracting for your viewers and detract from the overall video quality of your videos. Now, personally, I don't use transitions too often, but there are definitely scenes when they add a lot to the overall feel of a video. A lot of transitions can look pretty advanced, especially some of the more cinematic ones, but don't worry because we're gonna step through how you can easily use professional video transitions to just like those in your videos, no matter what software you're using. But with great power comes great transition responsibility. And before you go plastering that new transition power all over your next video, make sure you stick around because once we've finished the tutorial, I'm also gonna give you my number one tip to remember while you're using your transitions and also the transition that I use most and why. All right, so by now you've probably figured out that most video editing software has some sort of built-in transition options, whether it's the infamous star wipe, a fold, a wipe, a slide, Whatever, a lot of these just look like they're from some sort of PowerPoint presentation. And in general, unless it's some cheesy high school graduation video or a slideshow for your grandparents, I'd probably avoid them. So how do you go or where do you go to get good transitions for your videos? Well, there's an awesome source for a ton of pre-built templates that you can easily customize to fit your own style and your own brand and to use in any of your video editing projects. And it's called Video Hive, and I use it on all of my professional projects. So we're gonna jump over now to the computer and I'm gonna walk you through the process. Okay, so here we are on videohive.net and there is a heap of different graphic elements, transitions, stock footage, 3D elements that you can use in your videos on this website. So it's really, really cool. But specifically looking at transitions, which is what we're talking about today, you can come up here to motion graphics and you can see down here, you've got transition elements under Apple Motion. You've got transition elements under elements. You've got them specific for Adobe Premiere as well, and also After Effects. So if you're using After Effects, Adobe Premiere, Apple Motion, or even Final Cut, these will work with Final Cut, then these are the ones to use. If you're using video editing software that is something else other than one of those, then you'd be after the generic ones here, which should work on most video editing software and just come down to transitions. But I will cover that off very, very soon. But for this tutorial, I'm gonna show you in Adobe Premiere and we're going to go to elements. Now you can see already the types of things you've got here. As we mouse over some of these, this is some lower thirds or some titles that are literally just drag and drop and you can use them on your videos. These are some call outs. We've got some heads up display effects and some more titles. Then we go to transitions. We've got some transitions down here too, but we can narrow this down by hitting transitions here. Now the best way to buy these normally is in packs. And actually I think most of the ones here are in transition packs, meaning that you get a heap of transitions with the one-off purchase. So this one here, for example, for $38, you're getting 510 transitions. And as you can see, they're actually really high-end, high-quality transitions. And the way that they work is that you literally just drag and drop them in Adobe Premiere, in this case, uh, into your video editing software. But there's heaps of other ones here if you're after something specific. So you can go through and pick the one that matches what you're after. But it's generally a pretty safe bet to pick a high-end transition pack like this one. So we'll click on this one here. So we're gonna go ahead and purchase this one here, Modern Transitions for Premiere Pro, $38. And links again to videohive.net and to this exact transition pack that we're gonna be running through, I'll throw down in the description box. So once you've downloaded the transition pack, the installation process might be a little bit different depending on which template pack you get. And obviously if you're using Premiere versus Final Cut, Apple Motion, After Effects, that process might be a little bit different. But what all of them will have is some sort of instructions or tutorial videos here to show you how to use it or how to install it. So in this case here, you can see that this video here is showing us how to apply and use this transition. But I'm gonna show you how to do that too. When we go across to the actual files here, the PR files, the Premiere files, in here we've got footage, which is some sample footage that they've used. We've got some sounds that come with the template. And we've got our Premiere file here. So in this case here, we actually don't need to install anything 
into Adobe Premiere to be able to use these templates. It's literally a Premiere editing project file that you can open inside of your video editing project to have access to these transitions. Okay, so I'm here in Adobe Premiere now. It's got a really basic project set up with two video clips in the timeline. Playback's gonna be fun because of the screen recording. So it pans across past the chairs and then over into the pool. Now we're gonna drop some transitions on this cut here just to show you the types of things we can do. So the first thing we're gonna do is import that project that we just purchased from Video Hive. I want to suggest that you do here is tick the box to create a folder for all the imported items. So that way it's all contained in the one place. So you can see here we've got a new folder here, transition pack. And then we've got a heap of different transitions and things down here too. So you can see that while there's 23 different projects inside, it says of swipes, there's 12 of them. Of IGB swipes, there's 12 of those. So there's a heap of different options in here. So let's look at zoom spins. We'll double click on it to open up that timeline. And as we scrub through here, we'll be able to see the different effects that we get. So it's really just a matter of going through and finding the transition in here that you like the look of. There's a heap of different ones that we can try. So let's just grab this one here. Now just zoom in on the timeline here, just pressing the plus key on the keyboard. So what we need to do is grab these two transition video layers here. And if we want the audio to come along with it, then we'll grab that audio track. You can just hold down shift when you're clicking on these. We'll then copy that, Command C or Control C. We'll go back over to our timeline and we'll just paste these at the end of our clip here. And what you wanna do is pick the, your transition up and lift it up a layer so there's not going to be overriding your video layer, but so it's gonna sit on top of it. We'll just drop it there. We'll come over here, we'll zoom in and we'll position this transition where that marker is on our cut so that the transition happens at that marker point. Now just looking at the quick preview that we've got here, you can see that the transition is actually happening inside of our video. So what that tells me is we've got 4K footage in the timeline here and the transition has come in at 1080. So if that happens to you, all you need to do is select your two clips, right click and choose scale to frame size. And then that transition is now scaled up to the right size. So if we scrub through this, you can see that we've now got that transition there on our timeline. I'll just render out this section. So as we play that back now, we can see that we're panning across the furniture, looking outside. We've now hit our transition, zoom in, spin, and now we're back on our way. Again, apologies for the stuttery playback. Okay, so we'll remove this transition and show you another one as well. We'll come back over here and let's try lens swipes. So we'll double click on that sequence. Let's play through a couple of these. Faster, really fast. Okay, cool, so they've actually named them here, right, 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 left, left, left. Then we've got one going up, down. Cool, so we're gonna want the right because our pan is moving across that way. So again, we'll select these two video layers, hold down shift, grab the audio as well. Command C to copy it, come back to our timeline, paste it on the end, move our video layers up one. Drag it back along and drop it where it snaps to that marker, just right there. Now we play this through. So you can see we're able to get some really cool effects, literally drag and drop or copy and paste onto your timeline. That's gonna save you so much work and you'll be able to get some really professional looking transitions in your videos. Okay, so that's Adobe Premiere. Now, Final Cut is almost exactly the same. So if we go back over here to Apple Motion and choose Elements. And you're gonna go to Transitions. And we've got some transition packs, exactly the same. Now with these, you will actually need to install them into Final Cut to be able to use them. But all the instructions, as I said, they give you in the template that you purchase. So then in Final Cut, the process is almost exactly the same. We've got a very similar timeline down the bottom here. We'll just come over to Transitions. And you can see the transition packs that we've got installed. We've got Clean Transitions which has a heap of these here. And we've also got wipe transitions. Now these were just transition packs that we bought from Video Hive. You can see that as you put your mouse over, you can preview what they're gonna look like. And just drag and drop them on to that section between the two clips. And that transition is now on. So you can see how simple and effective it is to use these in your projects. We'll delete this one. I'll show you another one here now. Let's grab this one here and drop it on. Let's play that through. So 
So you can create some pretty cool looks just by dragging and dropping. You can also see that they're much better than some of the pre-built ones. Okay, so we're back on Video Hive. What do you do if you don't have Premiere, After Effects, Apple Motion? Well, you wanna go to Motion Graphics, go down to Transitions. And so all the transition packs in here are pre-rendered matted video files that you can drag and drop into almost any video editing application. So let's take a look at this one here, 10 graceful matte transitions. And you can see straight away down here, it says there's 10 transitions, very easy to use, that's always good. No plugins needed. So you don't need any additional software. So I'm here in ScreenFlow, I've got two video files down here, or two video clips down here in the timeline, just to show you how to do it in more basic video editing software. We'll come over here to our files. You can see I've got the 10 transition packs imported into this project. I just hit the plus button, add file, picked the 10 files that I downloaded and they're in there. Now we can pick the transition file that we want. So this one here, transition six and drag it down to our timeline. So as we scroll through that now, you can see that as we go through, we get the white bars on, the transition started and it goes to full white. So the difference here is we actually then need to put a second version of this. So if we copy this, paste it right after it, then we need to reverse the second one. We right click on it, choose reverse clip, and that will go from white back into the new shot. So if we play through that now, the bars come on, goes to full white, the new shot comes in and we're back out. So it's a little bit of a different process, but we don't actually need to touch the clips underneath. And again, that process might be a little bit different depending on the types of transitions that you're actually purchasing. You may just need to drag and drop them on and they could be good to go straight out. You may not need to reverse them. And also depending on your editing software, you may need to actually apply what's called an alpha channel filter onto your transition. So I've got this one here set up that way as an example. So you can see that we're actually not seeing the original video file underneath it. So you have, with that clip selected, in this case, we'll come over to our video filters, hit the plus, go down to color effect, and we're going to choose mask to alpha and hit add. Now you can see that our transition is taking place underneath of our clip there. So that's how easy it is to get professional looking transitions in your video editing projects so that you're not stuck using the built-in ones that come with your editing software. Whether you're working in Adobe After Effects, Final Cut, Adobe Premiere, or even in this example, ScreenFlow or other video editing software. Okay, so earlier in the video, I said I was gonna share with you my number one tip when you're using transitions, and that is to not overuse them. A lot of people can go way overboard and just use a transition on almost every cut and it can not only be really distracting, it can really be pretty damn annoying for anyone watching your videos. So effective transition use can definitely add a lot to your videos, but too many transitions can definitely leave you worse off than without using any at all. The moment that they're too predictable or way too far out of place, they just become distracting and annoying. So the number one transition that I use for most of my editing is actually just a simple jump cut. So no special fades, dips, cuts, star wipes, wipes, whatever. It is literally just a cut at the right time. So you can mix it up by zooming in, adding a jump cut, which I typically use on this channel when I need to emphasize something. So if I'm summarizing something and I want to emphasize that last point or the most important part or the takeaway message for you guys, then I'll normally zoom in on that section. Or if I'm filming here with a big window and the light changes dramatically outside, I might add a quick cut with a zoom to change up the shot a little bit so that you don't notice how much the light has actually changed in this room. So you can actually use really simple cuts and zooming as transitions to help break up your footage, but also to help fix any flaws that happened while you were filming as well. So really it's all about keeping things simple and not going overboard with the transitions to the point that your videos are distracting or annoying for your viewers to watch. And in a lot of cases, keeping things simple could actually give you really good results. Now, if you're looking to speed up your video editing process and to make sure that you're editing in the most efficient way without any rework or wasted time, then check out the video linked on screen to our complete video editing method. And the other video linked on screen is one from YouTube. So I I hope it's good. I don't know what it is. YouTube's suggesting that you would like it. So if it's good, let me know and I'll see you soon.